Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm a detailer Rolling 60 Crip named Pierre Roman. Now the Rolling 60 Crips are one of the most notorious and most known Crip gangs ever, especially with them having sets all over the country. But the original Rolling 60 started in the 1970s in South Central and was an offshoot of the original West Side Crips. Only 60s would later become one of the biggest gangs of South Central and went to war with several gangs by the late 1970s, making them have many notorious gang members and killers from their set along the way. 80s was like the wild wild west. Shootings, robberies, and drug dealing was so common in the streets, it was a daily occurrence. Many members of the 60s were involved in every aspect of the streets. Now Pierre would be born around 1965 and joined the 60s in his teenage years. Even though he was in the streets, he took a different route at 18 and joined the Air Force. In 1986, Pierre was discharged from the Air Force, and by 1986, Pierre went back to the streets and had to survive, doing whatever he could to make some money. Pierre would still try to land legal jobs and was trying to become a police officer, but by 1987, his life would forever change. 1987, Pierre was 22 years old. On June 29, 1987, Pierre was driving his friend's 1984 Nissan 300ZX, but ended up crashing the car and wrecking it. Instead of giving him cash for the car, he decided to go out that night and steal one. Pierre would be on North Highland Ave, where he spotted another Nissan 300ZX. He approached the car to steal it, and inside the Nissan was a driver named Jade and another man who was in the passenger seat. Pierre and an accomplice would approach the car. Pierre and his accomplice approached both sides of Jade's car. Pierre pointed the gun at Jade and told him to get out the car. Jade reached under his seat for his gun and the other man that was with Pierre pulled Jade's friends from the car and held him from behind. Jade pulled out his gun and him and Pierre got into a shootout. This would lead to Pierre being shot in the arm and Jade losing his life. Jade's friend managed to break free and he ran from the scene. He later would return back to the car and discovered that Jade was shot and still in the driver's seat. Jade was later rushed to the hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Knowing of Pierre's gang ties, LAPD investigators learned on how he crashed a car that looked exactly like the one the killer was trying to steal. According to the police, this led to detectives serving search and arrest warrants for Pierre and the other suspect on July 28, 1987. Empty holsters and receipts for ammunition which was from the same caliber that was used in the fatal shooting were discovered, along with a photo of Pierre posing in front of a white car. The vehicle matched the description given by witnesses who saw a car fleeing from the crime scene. Most notable among the physical evidence was the fact that investigators saw what police later described as an inline circular wound on the right forearm of Pierre when he was taken into custody, but police couldn't prove that he was shot by Jade. The DA's office obtained a criminal felony against Pierre and the other suspect on August 27, 1987, but the case was later dismissed after Pierre's lawyer filed a motion saying there was insufficient evidence. Pierre was an active candidate for a police officer job with the LAPD at the time of his arrest in 1987, but was eventually disqualified. LAPD also said he applied to more than a dozen agencies before landing his position as a federal officer. Pierre managed to stay on law enforcement's radar, partly because of his determination to become a police officer. For a nine-year period, starting in 1995, Pierre applied on 19 occasions to 19 different police departments in California for employment as a police officer but was rejected several times. In 2003, Pierre applied to become an officer in San Francisco, sparking renewed interest in his case. Background check initiated by the San Francisco Police Department alerted the original investigators of the murder. December 15, 2003, police officers collect reference samples from Pierre and a more modern DNA analysis determined that Pierre's profile was indeed a match to the bullets recovered from the crime scene. The Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office charged Pierre with one count of murder on December 17, 2003, and he was taken to custody on an arrest warrant the same day. Pierre's defense pinned the crime on Pierre's brother, who died and supposedly matched the description of the shooter. They also disputed that a scar on Pierre's arm was from a bullet. But Pierre wouldn't be charged with this crime until 2017, and after 30 years, he would be sentenced to life. Pierre is now 58 and his earliest parole date is 2034. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.